saying those things don't belong there and Jesus is breaking those things off. He came to uproot those things. He came to pull them out from the roots so that you are not like a rocker that goes up and sits back down in that place where you were supposed to take off from. It's a defensible place. Many times you may find in your life, there are things in your life that you defend. There are things that you defend. Oh, you know what? I can't go to church. I can't pursue God because my husband holds me back. You know, we, we justify it. We defense, we're defensive of these things. Oh, you know what? I really wanna go after God, but my parents don't let me. Oh, I really wanna run after God, but my wife, oh, you know, she doesn't back me up and she doesn't support me. I really wanna run after God's purpose and run after this destiny I hear about on a Sunday, but oh, I don't have the money to do it. You know what? We use all these things, but God is saying those things are actually like strongholds that are keeping you back from pursuing God and pursuing the thing that He has for you. And that's what He's saying is He wants to break those things off of us. He wants to break those things that we always justify, that we always defend, that we always say, oh, I can't because. All the excuses is what He wants to break off of us so that we can take off and be the rocket reaching our destiny. And that's what He is doing right now. Some of us, you know, we're like, oh, you don't know. You don't know my family history. You know, there is demonic stuff in my family and they were all into witchcraft and they did Ouija boards and they did all this stuff and it pulls me down. But I tell you that greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Greater is He that is in you than He that was in your family history. Amen. 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 Greater is Jesus. He can break everything. He breaks everything off of you. Many times, these, these are the kind of strongholds that many of us hold on to. I had strongholds. I had strongholds where I used to make an excuse. You know what? I can only go this far in God because my religious mentality said that that's all I could have of God. Even religious mentality, God wants to break off. He wants to break off and strip off of our belief system so that we are free to run with what He is saying. We are free to do what He is calling us to do. Somebody shout Amen. Somebody shout Amen if you believe that Jesus is more powerful than your past. Amen. 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 You know, many times it is the past that we allow to draw us back. It is the, pe- the things of the past, the hurts of the past. Oh, the things that people did to us. Oh, you know, she hurt me and that will ever be forever in my mind and my memory. But I'm telling you that even those things, God is even uprooting memories of things of the past that have haunted you, that have held you back, that He is saying, no, that is not you and that is not where you are going. That is not what I have given you. That's not what you're destined to. He's saying that you are called for something so much far above, far above. You know, in Ephesians, it says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above. We are far above all of these things. That is the truth. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let Satan lie to you. You know, and it's funny, even this last week, we were, you know, talking to some people and I'm like, don't let Satan lie to you. Don't listen to him. And all he has is lies and deceit, I tell you now. And I'm saying that because even for me, I say that to myself, he's lying to me and I'm not gonna buy into the lies and deceit anymore because I am far above seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Principalities are under your feet. The things of the devil are under your feet. Your past are under your feet. The history is gone. The future is coming. You are moving towards something that is so far greater than what you have experienced. And that's what God is breaking off are the things of the past. You know, David has been preaching about identity. I do know what he's been preaching about. Identity, purpose and impact. Many times we don't know who we are because the strongholds have defined us. These strongholds that are are in our minds and in our belief system, in our family history, you know, all these things have defined us and have told us you can't do it. You can't rise above. You can't be anything more. Look at your father. Look at your mother. Look at your grandmother. And it's like, you know, you can't be anything more than that. And I say, you know, God's saying, don't look to your grandmother. Don't look to your father. Look to your father in heaven who has given you everything. Amen. We look at everything around us instead of looking at the one who created us. 
When I, you know, I, and I know we're on this series of identity, purpose, and impact, but how can you know your identity if you keep going back to the strongholds? How can you really move forward unless you allow God to break off everything that has kept you captive, everything that has kept you in chains and bondage? And you know, I hear this over and over again. Sometimes, you know, I hear people say, you know what? Our marriage has been absolute rubbish and I don't want it anymore. And yet you still keep going back to the same rubbish. So why say you want to go that way and you still keep going that way? Something's got to break. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. And Jesus can change that for you tonight. Jesus can change that for you. The devil uses those strongholds to keep you captive. He uses them so that you don't move into everything that he has for you. And this is where I get really excited because when our eyes are opened, we actually begin to move in what God has for us. I want to read a scripture, Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10. So I'll just share a couple of scriptures that, that the Lord was really giving to us this week as well. So if you have your Bibles, Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10, it says, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. But you know, the beginning of that verse there says, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. You know when David's up here preaching about looking at yourself in the mirror and going, oh, I'm all of that. Oh, I'm so fine and I'm so handsome. Those are words that God has put in your mouth because it needs to cancel out the strongholds of the past and the things that are negative that are not of God. The words are put in your mouth. Begin to speak them. Begin to speak them over your lives. Begin to speak them over your children. Begin to speak them over your finances. Speak them out because God has put those words in your mouth. So don't take lightly. And you know, sometimes we get a bit of a giggle and we think it's really kind of funny. And it is a little bit funny, but I tell you the truth, there is power in your words. There is power in the tongue. In Proverbs it says, there is power in the tongue for life and death. What are you speaking? What are you speaking over your children? What are you speaking over your wife? What are you speaking over your circumstance? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Every time you look at your wife and you go off at her and say things negatively, you are speaking death over your wife. No wonder you're going to get a pop and a pan back in your face because you just spoke death and the poor woman's just trying to defend herself. Ho, 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 hang on. What are you speaking? It says here, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Many of us need to start getting into the Word of God because we're speaking something else. You cannot bring the Word of God out if you are not taking the Word of God in. And so that's how important it is to, to read the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, come to church on a Sunday, go to your connect groups. Why? Because it really gets the Word of God in you so the Word of God can come out of you and you begin to speak the Word of God over your lives. Amen? Amen. I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to root out and to pull down. What we're doing in this church is we don't want to raise up a whole lot of people who come and depend on Sunday services. I've just got to get to church so that I can get prayed for, so I can be delivered, so I can be free for the rest of the week. That's not the kind of people that God is raising us to be. God is raising us and He is empowering each and every one of you to where you can root out and pull down. You don't have to wait for the pastor. You don't have to wait for Connect Group. You don't have to wait for the next fix because the fix is in you, Jesus Christ Himself, who is in you to root out and to pull down, pull down, pull down those strongholds, to destroy and to throw down. The power of God is in you. For every born again believer, Jesus lives inside of you. You have the power to uproot, to pull down, to throw down and to destroy. Don't get me wrong, we're here to walk with you. We're here to support you. But ultimately, every single one of us needs to come to the place of absolutely appropriating the power of Jesus inside of us to where we are pulling down and breaking down all those things and building and planting. Somebody say yes, because God has given it to you. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, 
pulling down strongholds. And this was really strong. This was really strong of what God was speaking to us this week was I am pulling down strongholds. I'm pulling down strongholds in people's lives. I'm pulling down ancient strongholds. Now, many of you are probably not over the age of 60 in this place and you're thinking, why would I have ancient strongholds? These strongholds come from things of your past, even in your family line. Even, you know, there's there's like a, a whole lot of, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I'm divorced because my father was divorced and his grand, you know, he was divorced and he was divorced and that's how I'm gonna be. Oh, you know what? I've got diabetes because my mother had diabetes, my grandfather had diabetes and they had diabetes and so, you know, I just, accept it. But in Jesus, we don't have to accept these things because He has actually broken those curses so that we don't have to live with the past and the things of the past. Amen. Those strongholds are broken. Here is why God desires to break off the ancient strongholds in His life, in our lives. This is why He wants to break them off. You know why? He wants to break them off because there are people around you that need to be set free. Not only should you be set free, but there are captives in your families, there are captives in your household, there are captives in your community that need to be set free. How can you set them free if we are not set free? Today, Jesus will set you free so you can set others free. There's a whole community and captives that need to be set free. If you don't like being in bondage, how much more so people who don't even know God, amen? He's setting you free so that you can set others free. It's never just about us being free. It's about others being free. Jesus didn't die for Himself. He died for you and me and everybody else in this whole wide world because it's about others. And if we are God's children, He is using us and wants to use us to set other people free. Your marriage restored and your marriage going to a whole new level will set other marriages free. Your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your grandparents. You know, there are people that have been married for 60 odd years and still don't have marriage together. They can look at yours five years, 10 years and go, oh, that is what marriage is all about. And they can be set free. Amen. I'm just going to share some of the strongholds that I believe that God was really showing to us. And, um, and then maybe after this, we will um, pray for some people if you want. What are some of these strongholds? Demonic activity. And by demonic activity, you know, it's like you have a little argument, but then it goes to a whole different place because there's a demonic you know, hand in there somewhere. That needs to be broken because that's not God. Amen. It's not God. Yes, arguments are normal, but when arguments on that level of demonic activity, that is not normal. You don't have to live under that because God broke you free from that. Family curses. Like I said, divorce, sickness, depression. The number of people who I've heard who, who just accept depression and mental illness as being normal because my mother had it and my grandmother had it, that's not, that's not normal in Jesus. Jesus said, I came to set the captives free and I came to set us free from mental illnesses and depression. Suicide is rampant in our society. How can we stop them and help them not commit suicide if we're thinking about it ourselves? We need to be broken from those things, amen? Amen. <laughs> Poverty. It's not normal in the kingdom of God. God did not say for us to be poor. He didn't mean for us to be poor. Even though we may come from poor backgrounds and poor, hey, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And where you finish is where God meant for you to be. And that's not in poverty. Family, and we just say, you know, it's just normal. I, you know, if I can just share something, I was sharing, um, my mom was sharing about how in her family, um, there are members of her family, so these are my aunties and my uncles, they've just accepted that they will never own a house, they will never go to university, they will never go beyond just maybe finishing high school. They will, they've accepted that they will never do that because that's just the way it is. My heart broke when my mother told me that because I'm like, man, they need to know Jesus because that is not the way it is. That is not what God intended for their lives. But many of us, there are even people in church who even think that. Come to church, get a fix and then go away way and still live in the same cycle, but God wants to break that cycle. Deeply rooted issues of hurt. These are some of the strongholds. People who offended you, people who have hurt you in the past, that they are so deeply rooted that God wants to uproot those things. It caught, because those hurts cause unforgiveness. They cause bitterness, anger, rage, malice, jealousy. Many times we're trying to tell, you know, our, our spouse or we're trying to tell somebody, don't be jealous, stop being jealous. But you know what? Maybe they can't because they need to pull out the roots that are causing the jealousy. The hurt from the past needs to go. Another stronghold are mindsets and beliefs that are contrary to God's Word and to how He actually sees you. 
So we need to break these mindsets and break these thinking of believing that I will always be this way because that's just the way it is. It needs to be broken. Addictions need to be broken. Addiction to what? Addiction to movies. Some people may be addicted to pornography, addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol. We need to break all these addictions. Addicted to your wife now or your husband. I don't mean that that's a bad thing, but when it's an addiction that is keeping you from being what God wants you to be, you need to break that. Because many of us, some of us, we put our spouses in the place of God. We put our partners in the place of God and we worship them instead of worshiping God. Don't get me wrong, you gotta love your spouse, you gotta love your partner, but God is God, amen? God is God and He needs to be God. Religion and self-righteousness needs to be broken. Issues in marriages, long-standing family feuds and family issues. They made a TV program about it. Family feud. They celebrate it. They think it's funny. It's not funny. God didn't mean for families to be fighting each other. God meant for families to be united, to love each other. And yet the world celebrates that we have a family feud. Oh, this family doesn't like that family because they went and did something to them. And that's not normal. And you know, and, and, and while people may laugh at it, but really people were breaking over this. You know, people are dying because of this. People are dying because there are family feuds. And the other thing he said was things in our lives that seem like impossible mountains that would never move. I want to say to you that there are things that God has broken off us that maybe we thought would never move. That maybe we thought, oh, we just can't get through this. And yet God has said, no, why are you buying into the lie? I have broken this and I want to break this. I want to break strongholds. You don't have to live with the things of the past. And when David was speaking today after praise and worship, about the past being gone. The verse that came strongly to me is the old is gone and the new has come. The old is gone. It's not just something to repeat. It's not just a, a nice scripture that looks good stuck on your wall. It is the truth in your heart and in your mind. It needs to be a reality for every single one of us. When we face a situation that may look like it used to look before, but there is no reaction to that, the old is gone, the new has come. Before your husband used to say, honey, you're putting on a little bit of weight. What? When we don't get that reaction anymore, girlfriend, the old is gone, the new has come. Amen. When something, see, you know, when, when a situation arises, when there's no money, you know, react the same way. No, because the old is gone, the new has come. The old is gone. The past needs to go. The past needs to be dead and buried today. Now, I know that you've heard this before, but there are things that God really wants to do supernaturally, supernaturally and miraculously to where it will never come up again. Where even you will walk in life from here on out, from this day forward, as though that thing never even happened. Never happened. You know, one of the scriptures that God gave me that I've been sitting on is Psalm 103. And in Psalm 103, it talks about how our sins are, are, are so thrown away into the sea of forgetfulness. Far, you know, He has cast our sins as far from the east to the west, meaning it's gone. As far as God is concerned, it's gone. It's only you and me that keep revisiting the past. In God, and God, He looks at us, He sees Jesus and He says, you know what, honey, that mistake you made, I don't remember it because you confessed it, you got rid of it. I don't remember it. Why are you remembering it? I don't replay that over and over in my mind. Why are you replaying the same thing over and over in your mind? We need to change the movie, yeah? Chuck out the old movie, put in a new movie, amen? Chuck out the old reel that's been playing over and over again and put in the new thing because the old is gone and the new has come. Mark 11, you can read this in your own time, but in Mark 11, it talks about, um, in verse 22 to 24, it talks about how, and the first bit of that verse, I love it. It just says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And then it goes on to say how mountains that you never thought could be removed can be removed. And if you believe, they will be removed. And Jesus, He looks at your mountain and He goes, that's nothing. That's nothing to me. I don't care about what you did in the past because I've got a whole future for you that I see for you that you've got to fulfill. Don't worry about what's happened. You just start looking at what's coming. You start looking at what I have for you because that's where you're going. That's where I've called you to go. Very quickly, how, how do we become free? Number one, confession. You need to confess it. I don't know about you. I found it hard sometimes, a lot of times. All right? I didn't do it. I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. You know, it's like you have to just say, oh, 
okay, I did it, you know? And so I'm sorry. So confession, you need to forgive, forgive others, forgive yourself. C, renounce, okay? Renounce and let it go. D, believe in your heart and faith, have faith in God. Believe. You can't just say these things and not believe. You must believe. It goes with faith. That's why at the beginning of that scripture it said, have faith in God. And then it goes on to tell you that the mountains will be removed. And then if you need to, you need to put some things right. If it means that you have to go and pay back the money that you stole from your sister-in-law, go and pay it back with interest. If it means that you have to go and, you know, say sorry physically, not just to Jesus. And, you know, if you actually have to go and take a cake and say, I'm sorry, and get on your knees and grovel and cry, go and do it. Why? Because it's setting you free. Ultimately, you know, many times we use the excuse, oh, why should I? Why don't they do it first? It's like, you know what? You're only bounding yourself up. You're only keeping yourself bound up in the chains that Jesus has already set you free from. Amen? So um, I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to ask David to come up. But I, I just want to encourage you because the thing that's been really strong in our hearts this week and that God's really been speaking is He is breaking ancient strongholds ancient strongholds. And don't think that there are things, oh, I'm okay. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But if you really allow the Holy Spirit to highlight things in your heart, you'll find that there are things that He wants to dig out. And I guarantee when He digs them out, it's beautiful. I know there's a little bit of pain at the time and you might be squirming and thinking, this is really hard. I can't do this, but I want to encourage you, do it, do it, do it, because the future for you is so bright. What God has for you is amazing. It's, it's huge, it's large, it's expensive. You can't even see it right now because you've got stuff that is blocking you. You've got some of those strongholds that are still even defining your future. The strongholds have not just defined your past and your present. Those strongholds are also defining your future. But you need to see your future clearly the way that God sees it so that you can run after everything that He has for you. Amen.